everyone. Do you want to upload any new information into your database? Yes, please, Jack. I'm always hungry to learn more. That's not the only thing you are always hungry for. Who would you recommend this time? Michelangelo. Get ready to be amazed. Today we are learning about one of the greatest artists that ever lived. Michelangelo Ludovico Buonarroti Simoni. Who was Michelangelo? He was an insightful poet, a master marble sculptor, a painter, a skilled architect, and an innovative engineer who became a leading figure of the Italian Renaissance. Renaissance is a French word meaning rebirth. It describes the period between the 14th and 16th centuries, a time marked by the desire to rediscover Greek and Roman works of art and literature. Where was Michelangelo born? He was born in 1475 in Tuscany, in the city of Caprese. He was the second born boy of an ancient and noble Florentine family. Where did Michelangelo live? He was still a baby when his family moved to Florence, where he spent the majority of his life. In adulthood, Michelangelo often travelled to Rome and Bologna to work on his many projects, and to Carrara, a place famous for its marble quarries, which produced beautifully unique white and grey marble. Michelangelo would sometimes spend months in Carrara, attempting to choose the perfect marble blocks for his sculptures. For Michelangelo, art was a priority from the earliest of days. Like many youngsters, he was reluctant to do his schoolwork and preferred to spend his time drawing and watching artists at work instead. As much as people appreciated art, artists were still considered simple workers. And for someone like Michelangelo, who came from a noble family, it was frowned upon to become an artist but that didn't seem to bother him. At the age of 13, Michelangelo began to work as an apprentice in Ghirlandaio's workshop. Ghirlandaio was a famous painter of that time and taught Michelangelo the technique of painting frescoes, which are paintings created on wet plaster. Ghirlandaio soon noticed Michelangelo's extraordinary talents and recommended that Michelangelo's education continued at the Medici Palace, which was home to the most powerful family in Florence, and a school solely for sculptors. Michelangelo's skill was noticeable immediately. He showcased his personal sculpting style, daring to improve on the classics he was learning from. He was bold and confident, but sometimes arrogant too. Jealousy and envy between students were common, and before long, Michelangelo got caught up in a fist fight with a fellow student named Pietro Torrigiano. Pietro managed to land a hard punch to Michelangelo's nose, causing it to take a rather crooked shape, which you can spot instantly in his portraits. Michelangelo was deeply fascinated with the human anatomy. He wanted to study the muscles of the body in more detail and requested permission to dissect dead bodies so he could make artistic sketches of them. These studies helped give his sculptures an incredible realism. Before long, his works became revered, even during his younger years, with all his masterpieces created before he turned 30. His originality lay in his ability to see beyond the block, to sculpt as if he were freeing a figure imprisoned inside the marble. His skill earned him the nickname of the Divine, and his fame quickly spread across Italy. In fact, he was so well regarded that several biographies were published during his life, which is a rare occurrence for artists indeed. What was Michelangelo known for? Michelangelo was very productive and created many incredible pieces of art, but today we are focusing on three of his works, which are considered by many as some of his best. The first is called Pietà. In 1497, a powerful cardinal asked him to sculpt a statue of Mary, the mother of Jesus, holding her dead son's body. This was a common theme known as Pietà, which is the Italian for pity. Michelangelo worked hard, paying attention to every bone, muscle, vein, drapery fold and strand of hair, and the result was breathtaking. The work represented the Renaissance ideology of beauty and perfection. The second masterpiece we are learning about is called David. In 1501, the city of Florence decided to assign Michelangelo the job of creating a statue of the biblical David in Piazza della Signoria, Florence's main square. David was a symbol of strength, bravery and intelligence, and through the statue the Florentines hoped to embody all such qualities and send a message to their enemies that they were ready to defend their city and maintain its independence. 
The main obstacle for this piece was the condition of the marble proposed by the council. The block was fragile, it was old and hard, with tiny holes and veins, meaning that no artist wanted to run the risk of working with it. But Michelangelo was bold enough to accept the job. The statue was another success. Its style was a combination of the ancient sculptures with a new dynamic twist typical of Michelangelo's work. The third work of art required the utmost skills of a painter, engineer and true visionary. In 1508, Pope Julius III called Michelangelo back to Rome to propose a huge project. It was to decorate the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in St. Peter's Basilica. Michelangelo did admit that painting was not his main strength, but decided to take the challenge on nonetheless. It was a huge undertaking. The ceiling was immense, ranging to around 13,000 square feet, with many intricate nooks and curves to work around. Michelangelo used his engineering skills and designed a structure similar to a bowed bridge, with steps stretching from one side of the chapel to the other. The holes that supported the bridge scaffolding are still visible to this day. In the middle of the ceiling, Michelangelo painted the main events from the first chapter of the Bible. Three scenes of the creation, three scenes of Adam and Eve, and three scenes of Noah and the Great Flood. Around these scenes, he placed 12 panels depicting prophets and prophetesses, known as Sibyls, and eight mini-scenes of biblical families. At the four corners, he painted stories of the salvation, with 16 half-moon shaped spaces with images of Jesus' ancestors in them. The best known scene is the creation of Adam, in which God is moving towards Adam and infusing him with life. It was a very innovative way of depicting the scene, with God seen as an energetic and powerful being moving towards Adam. The two figures were anatomically perfect and give the impression of a 3D effect. For this reason, it was often commented that Michelangelo painted like a sculptor. It took him four years to accomplish this astonishing project, but it wasn't all plain sailing. He faced many difficulties and struggles throughout the assignment, but no problem he couldn't overcome with a bit of determination. After many ups and downs, Michelangelo created one of his most impressive and famous pieces of work. Among some of the most curious facts that we should mention about Michelangelo is that he occasionally hid stylized depictions of his face in his works. If you look at the Last Judgment, the fresco covering the whole altar of the chapel, you will find St. Bartholomew holding the skin of a face which most writers agree is Michelangelo. Michelangelo was certainly popular amongst popes, and he was asked to accomplish many commissions and architectural works, such as the redesign of Capitoline Hill and finished St. Peter's Church in Rome. Michelangelo's most lasting contribution to the cathedral is the dome that crowns the church. He never married or had any children, and instead explained that art was his wife and his creations his children. He lived poorly, like a monk, but used a big part of his money to support his family and friends. Though he grew to be a rich man, his clothes were always dirty, and he rarely gave himself a sponge bath. The legend says that Michelangelo's clothes had to be peeled off his body when he died, since he had been wearing them for so long. In spite of ageing, he remained active until the very end, both physically and mentally. But in his 88th year, in 1564, Michelangelo became very ill, and before long he passed away, with his closest friends by his side. His body was taken back to Florence and interred at the Basilica di Santa Croce. This remarkable man is still considered one of the greatest artists to ever walk the earth. His legacy lives on 457 years after his death. He was an artist and a sculptor who dedicated his whole life to his passion and all his efforts to master it. Wasn't he exceptional? Michelangelo's sculptures are a kind of magic. So all his statues were just blocks of marble before he started creating them? Yes, can you believe it? I don't think it's so hard to be honest. I might try myself and make a statue of you two Rusties. Hmm, maybe you are the new Michelangelo. But I don't think it's going to be easy. It wasn't for him. One thing you can take away from his story is that he has always worked incredibly hard. He never stopped. In everything he did, he continued to explore and master new techniques, 
always demanding perfection in what he was doing. He always set himself up for new challenges, from the very beginning of his career to the very end of his life. Like when he struggled to make his dad understand he wanted to become an artist. Exactly. Michelangelo followed his passion and desire to express himself through art, in spite of his father's rebukes. I'm glad he did that. Otherwise, we would have missed these incredible works of Michelangelo. And he wouldn't have lived the life he wanted to live, the one he was born for, the life that fulfilled him.